Hello, this is Molly Reamer with 30 Days of Goddess and Bridget's Grove with this week's mini ritual for the Creative Spirit Circle. And I'm keeping it hopefully simple and sacred this week using the continuing to explore the Rooted Woman Oracle by Sharon Blackie. And then I have an assist from the deck by Linda Fabry. This was a gift. So this was a gift from Taryn. This was a gift from Teal. So thank you to both Taryn, Taryn and Teal for enhancing my divination practice in the last year. Oops, there goes my little book and we will find it again. I put it on my leg to have it open to the right place and then sometimes it falls down when I shift. So anyway, I'm also using the Story Goddess Oracle, the Danu card, since we're still in our month of flow, in our month of Danu. And these card packets I put together from the Story Goddess Oracle, this was a project I created for our Goddess Magic patrons. So I'm still working on creating this in color. That's a long-term project that's probably going to take multiple years to see into fruition if but people who are members of the goddess magic um at the ritual theory tier or the magic mail tier actually get the colored oracle cards as they're being unfolded where so as they're being created in color they get those in the mail uh, we're not we haven't done very many but as we proceed to make them pre um, as we continue to make them, they are getting those cards as part of their magic mail. And uh, but then this deck is just one I printed myself in in um, two colors. There is there are fifty two cards in this deck. Loved creating this. this. is one of those projects that I created, and I created it last year. And it has just been such a delight to me on a personal level. It's been a delight to me to use. I feel like it's one of the best things I've ever made. To be honest, I feel like it's one of the best things I've ever made. So I would love to see it in full color in the future because I love it as a print your own, but it would be even more spectacular in a full color version. And so I've continued to draw upon it for inspiration, support, and insight throughout this year. I think I'm going to continue to use it for many years to come. So that's just tooting my own horn a little bit there about this was so, and it was so joyful. And it was one of those things. Sometimes I create stuff and I commit to it. And then as the year draws to a close, I'm kind of thinking, Ugh, like, why did I say I do this? This is too much work. I never once felt that way. These were only a joy and delight to create. It was a project that was just the right size to fold into my week, my month, my year, and it was such a delight. Like it came only from delight and joy. It never became like difficult or like too much. So I think about that as an example or as an insight. Like you know, what else can I create that always feels like a delight and a joy? And you know, maybe it's unrealistic to think everything's gonna be a delight and a joy. There's bumps and bruises with any ordinary life, but this one was such a delight and a joy. I'm like, I wish everything I did always felt that way because it was so fun. So anyway, long side story about the story goddess oracle but anyway that was a benefit for the goddess magic patrons and so we're on the Danu card from my own personal deck of these cards so that's the um goddess guidance ritual packet it was free for everybody this month i will link to that below so you get your own packet to make a Danu card like this but um this is from my personal set which is different and so we're going to actually start with the Rooted Woman Oracle. I felt like this deck was a perfect companion to our month of flow, our month of Danu. And I just was, I delighted in seeing this card when it came up because it is the bridge, the place between worlds. So if you've been following along, our past two ritual videos have both been about thresholds and crossroads. And then I thought, well, what do you need? between at which what do you need at the threshold what do you need at the crossroads you need a bridge to the next step so it just seems like this really delightful pairing this really delightful connection and this on unfolding journey so the rooted woman oracle does proceed based on this path like you're going on a quest you're going on a heroine's journey and so it makes sense that the that there's crossroads and thresholds and bridges because you're going on a journey but the connection between them was just really powerful for me because these rituals draw on various resources and to see the overlaps and the synchronicities between them is really powerful so the bridge is the place between worlds so i think if we're thinking about crossing a threshold and we're thinking about being at the crossroads then what what where's the bridge what bridge is there the bridge in this card is an in-between place. On one side of the chasm lies the mundane world and the life we know we've outgrown. On the other side, the other world shimmers, alight with promise and possibility. 
the bridge invites us to step over. The bridge invites us to step over. But my thought with regarding the thresholds and the crossroads is that maybe if we feel stuck at the crossroads or maybe we feel poised to the thresholds, threshold and we're not quite sure how to cross, maybe that's because we need a bridge. Maybe we need a bridge between the life we have and the life we'd like to to build. So maybe that's the reason we hesitate at the crossroads. Maybe that's the reason we wait at the threshold is because we need a bridge to continue our path, continue walking. Uh, Do we really believe in the magical new world across the water? Do we really believe it will be quite so bright and shiny after we've crossed? The bridge is a point of transition from one place to another or from one way of being to another. It's a liminal place, a place between stories where the old story is fading and a new one is waiting to emerge. Its invitations are manifold as we hover on the brink of profound transformation, but as we stand there on the bridge, we're asked to embrace uncertainty. This is a time of waiting, of not quite knowing the future. Can we trust in a possible future anyway? Is that magical land really as good as it looks? Can we accept the risk of leaving our known, safe, and familiar old world behind and make the decision to cross to an indeterminate new one? And I think that's the thing all of these things ask us to consider. Thresholds, doorways, pathways, bridges, crossroads. It's an indeterminate future. We don't necessarily know what lays beyond, lies beyond. And so it may keep us kind of stuck in that holding place because we don't know for sure. And sometimes, and I talked about this a lot when I did Living the Questions, sometimes we need to sit with that unknowing held inside and be okay with it. We need to make our peace or make friends with the unknowing, the unknowing, the unknown, the not knowing and be okay with it. The bridge card calls on us to believe in the possibility of a new world and a new life and in the new story that's unfolding before our eyes. In one sense, what's required is a leap of faith. The structure of the bridge is solid and sure beneath our feet, but we can only know this once we've taken the first step to cross it. We can only know this when we take the first step to cross it. And then, really powerfully, the card from Linda Fabry, guess what? We got stepping stones. They help us to cross the bridge, right? If we're taking the first step into the unknown, if we're taking the first step on a new path, if we're taking the first step across the threshold, taking the first step down the new direction on the crossroads, we need to follow these stepping stones. So I love this. There is no such thing as a block in the unending persistent stream of creativity only opportunities to stabilize and catch your breath. So there's no block, just opportunities to stabilize and catch your breath. Take your time. Take your time. There is a path to follow. There is a bridge. There are stepping stones on your way. And there's no such thing as a pause, just an opportunity to stabilize and catch your breath. So perhaps an affirmation for this week is, I stabilize and catch my breath. I take my time. I take the first step. Okay, so we're going to check in with Danu's card now from my own personal version. And the word on the back is wild. So may we make our peace with the wild unknown. May we make friends with the wild unknown within and between and around. May we listen to the wild within. May we listen to the wild within. So here's another affirmation. I allow joy to guide me. I allow joy to guide me across the bridge and to the right place. I allow joy to guide me across the bridge and to the right place. And then there's a practice and a prayer and a process all in one. I take a deep breath and settle back into my body the most reliable way back to the sacred. I take a deep breath and settle back into my body, the most reliable way to the sacred. And it really is. That's the, that's our doorway to the sacred right here. And it's always with us, whether we're stepping on stepping stones or crossing bridges, the sacred is always here with us, right with us, right within us and all around us. So thank you so much for being here. May you be brave enough to cross those thresholds to choose a direction from the crossroads and trust that there's a bridge between worlds, a bridge between the life that you want to live and the life that you are living. There's a bridge and there are stepping stones along the way. Feel free to take the opportunity to stabilize and to catch your breath and to take your time, but keep moving forward. Thanks so much for being here. Keep living your magic. Bye-bye.